How inventory works in QuickBooks Desktop. Hey everyone, this is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University and um, had some back and forth with uh, one of our members uh, this week on inventory. And so I want to walk through in desktop, how does it work? How do you actually use inventory and what do you have to have set up uh, in QuickBooks Desktop? So here we are in the home screen. Now, the absolute most important thing that if you uh, buy inventory and then you sell it to customers is you have to set up your item list. All right. Your item list is, is a database of all of the different items that you sell in QuickBooks. There's, there's some other things in the item list as well, but for this purpose, you have to list out your inventory items. All right. So if I go up to list and I go to my item list, you're going to see in the sample company file, We've got all these service items, we've got inventory, we've got non-inventory, et cetera. We've got all sorts of things in this item list. Now we're gonna focus on the inventory, all right? So if you stock something that you then sell to customers, that is generally gonna be inventory. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and set up uh, a new inventory item. So I can right click uh, here and say new, and when you're just starting out in QuickBooks Desktop, you're not going to have anything in your item list or very, very little. It's going to be very small. All right, so we're going to set up a new item and we're going to call this an inventory part. All right, we're going to call this a hinge. All right, because this is for cabinets and so we also sell certain hinges. We are going to make this a sub account or a sub item of cabinets. Uh, we don't have a part number. You can always add that in and a unit of measure you do not need to add. OK, because these are simple items. We're not buying, you know, um, things that have to be put together, etc. Now, description on purchase transactions. So when you buy this from your supplier and you do a purchase order, you can put in language here uh, that will default and go on to the purchase order. Now, you don't have to put it in here. You can always add it to the face of the uh, the purchase order when you buy it. So I'm going to leave that blank and description of sales transactions. You know, I'm going to just say hinges. We'll say hinges. All right. So we're going to say that our sales price for each one is ten dollars. It is taxable and the income account that this is going to go to is going to be uh, we'll say materials income. OK, and the cost now this could this can vary but we're going to say $2. And so what this is going to do is when you do a purchase order, it'll automatically fill in that this costs $2. You can change it on the face of the purchase order. All right. So what you put here is not set in stone. And the cost of goods sold account is going to be uh, cost of goods sold. Okay. So what this is doing is saying when you buy it, from your, your supplier, you're going to buy it at $2 each. And when you sell it to a customer, you're going to sell it for $10 each. Again, this is, is like a database where it holds all this information. And we have said where we want this to go, construction income when we sell it uh, for materials and cost of goods sold when we sell it. Now, inventory information, you can put in a, a reorder point and you can put in a max. And if you're starting with some on hand and the total value, this is important, it's the cost, all right? So it's not the fair market value, it's the cost. You can put that in. Now it will record something in your books that looks a little strange, uh, but if you are starting QuickBooks, you're in business and you have inventory, you can put that in. We're gonna leave this blank. All right. So now let's say that we did a purchase order and now we got the invoice from our supplier. All right. So we want to go. So we bought some hinges. Let's say we bought 100 of them. And I want to show you if we go to this inventory valuation summary. All right. This is a report that shows how many we have on hand. You can see hinges. We have zero. So there's nothing here. The sales price 10 uh, and we have none of it here. So we have to buy some. So let's say that we did a purchase order, we uh, got the bill, and we need to enter a bill. So we're going to just pick a vendor. Uh, we'll just say CU Electric, date 1215, uh, amount due, 
we'll leave that blank for a minute and the bill due it's net 30 so 114. now here's the important thing when you buy inventory and you enter a bill you do not put it under expenses you put it under items all right and we are going to choose the item that we just bought you can put in a description if you want you don't need to we're going to say that we bought a hundred of them at two dollars now see this cost automatically came in here if we bought them at say 236 you can change it right on the face all right so 236 we're not buying them for a specific customer and we're not doing class tracking in this example all right so we buy 100 of them put it under the items tab save and close now when we go back to the hinge report or the the inventory valuation you can see we now have a hundred of them on hand Average cost was $2.36 because that's what we bought them for. Total, sales price 10 and our retail values $1,000. Now, let's say that we send or we sell one or a couple of them. Let's say we sell four of them to a customer. And we're going to do an invoice. You can do a sales receipt or an invoice. And we're going to say that this was for Christy Abercrombie uh, remodel. Let's see, we do not want to select outstanding time. All right, we got the date, invoice number, et cetera. Here's where it's important. We're gonna say that we, we sold, let's see, cabinets. We're gonna, we sold four of them at $10 each, so $40, and there's tax. Total $43.10. All right, so we sold it, we do an invoice, invoice, we hit save and close, you can see now that the quantity we have is 96. So to get the inventory into QuickBooks, you have to either enter a bill, um, you know, do a purchase order, et cetera, get it in there, and then when you sell it, it's an item on the invoice or the sales receipt, and it reduces your inventory on hand, all right? Once you understand these steps, it's fairly straightforward. And as you buy more, it'll make this on hand number go up and sell more, go down, and it'll keep your average cost. Now, this will be on the balance sheet as your part of your inventory, $226.56. The four that we just sold, took it out of here and put it into cost of goods sold. All right. Any questions, any comments, uh, feel free to leave those below and I will see you in another video.